Good Secretary to see you Blinken too. is in Saudi Arabia right now trying to to work on getting some type of deal together. Do you think any progress will be made? Frankly, I, I find a lot of this puzzling because look, the, the Israeli position is 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 so much stronger that they could make some pretty generous uh, uh, giving in on some of these issues. I almost like say whatever it takes to get those hostages back. I've actually been saying this from the literal outset of this war, that Israel could have been given even large numbers of Palestinian prisoners or whatever back to them, because where are they going to go? Into the Gaza Strip where it's already sealed off. So Israel, in my view, would give up nothing for that. I mean, it's a different issue when you're talking about agreeing to, you know, maybe let Hamas rule in the aftermath or whatever. That's never been on the table, and I don't think it is now. But you have to look at the other side of this equation, and it's hard for me to see why Hamas is going to agree to whatever these terms are to give these hostages back their last leverage. If the promise is on the other side of that, with or without it, a deal, then here comes the offensive in Rafah. So they seem to be working at cross purposes. And the bottom line is the Israeli hostages, some of which are American, continue to stay in, in, in uh, harm's way. Absolutely. And speaking of those hostages, I mean, why do you think we are seeing Hamas release these new hostage videos, uh, you know, two of them now featuring Americans? Well, I'm, I'm sure that their, their objective is to push off the Rafa operation. Uh, they want to have any kind of a deal. And, I, and I, I would wager that behind the scenes or part of their negotiating stitches is to get what was pitched several months ago, uh, which was a six week uh, ceasefire, something like that, that would, you know, give them breathing space. And I'm sure that that's what they're trying to negotiate. But, you know, again, you still keep coming back that there is no question uh, that whether it's six weeks from now or six days from now or six hours from now, one way or the other, uh, Netanyahu has made the decision that they're going to go in there. So really, the the, the uh, Hamas side is, is, has a very small hand and a very weak negotiating position. Um, and, you know, I'm just in anguish about the, the family members of, of all these hostages and really think that the Israeli government should do whatever it takes to get them back and then continue the war from there if necessary. So, so we keep talking about this invasion of Rafah, but that doesn't mean that there are not ongoing military actions because overnight there was airstrikes, IDF airstrikes in Rafah, killed more than two dozen Palestinians. How is that likely to impact negotiations? Well, it certainly can't be good. Uh, I, I mean, when you continue to do that, because these are basically shaping operations. Uh, and as you pointed out, they've been going on for quite some time now. Uh, it looks to me from a military perspective like the decision is already made and the, the early stages of action are already being put into operation, which is, you know, you'll go after any kind of identification you can of, of weapons uh, depots, ammunition stores, certainly command and control centers, uh, anything else that you think of that you can weaken their uh, resolve and their ability to offer up a coherent operation like command centers, et cetera. So it looks to me like they're continuing to take those things out. Uh, so that whenever the decision to go on the ground is given, you know, it makes it, uh, you know, easier for the ground troops. But I, I, I can't talk about this without really underscoring the bigger problem here for Israel is this is not going to solve any security problems because they have killed so many innocent people in Palestine is that even after the Hamas fighters, these final four battalions they claim are eliminated, the, the threat to Israel will remain higher because of all the people who have such extreme animosity towards Israel right now. This is not going to solve anything for Israel. Do you think we're any closer to a ceasefire or at least a temporary ceasefire? That, that's the only hope that I, that I do have some, and, and it's going to depend on the U.S. being willing to use the leverage of our ammunition because Israel's not going to do it on their own. So if there's going to be one, I think it's going to have to be because we put a lot of diplomatic pressure. And this released uh, information out over the weekend that Blinken has been given this report from USAID that within six weeks, the starvation uh, could start to have catastrophic death toll, which may be already too late to overturn. It is vital that we get a ceasefire immediately just to keep that uh, from getting out of hand.